As you've rightly said, um, the government has provided fixed-term regulatory relief for Australia Post through to 30 June 2021. And we did that because Australia Post management came to us and said that COVID-19 was producing a sharp spike in the number of parcels and a uh, reduction, further reduction in the number of letters being delivered. And so by making these changes in metropolitan areas to uh, reduce the re required delivery frequency, so essentially letters can now be delivered every second day, what this allows is uh, ultimately some 2,000 posties to be redeployed from delivering letters to delivering parcels. That means Australians will get their parcels uh, delivered more quickly, better service there, and Australians are enthusiastically ordering goods online and they all have to be delivered. Australia Post is the market leader there. At the same time, what it does is um, uh, moves posties to working in the growth area of the business as opposed to the declining area of the business. And so that, on the surface, makes sense. Australia Post indeed lost $200 million on the letter side of its business in the last completed financial year. So is there a chance, again, this will be permanent, this change? Well, what's before the Parliament, what uh, Labor was seeking to have disallowed, is a regulation that applies, it's time limited, it's through to 30 June 2021. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this week uh, a baseless scare campaign from Labor. You know there's a by-election on when Labor's running a scare campaign. We've seen it before and Anthony Albanese was up to it, uh, the same old uh, game this week. Uh, we have sought to explain the facts here and the very clear fact that we've explained, including to crossbench senators, is that the decision before them was whether to uphold or overturn a regulation that on its face applies through to 30 June 2021. That was the only decision they were being asked to make and uh, the, uh, the arguments and the evidence that was put forward by the government and indeed by Australia Post Board and Management uh, was, I think, well received by many of the crossbenchers. So my, my answer to your question is the regulation on its face applies to uh, the period through to 30 June 2021. That's the decision the government's made uh, in response to uh, Australia Post Management coming to us to say, here is uh, what, we've, uh, what we're facing as, a, as an organisation because of the particular challenge of COVID-19. Right, I understand that, and that's what's been dealt with here. That's what the crossbench has agreed with. But I'm also interested as to what the future holds. As I said, Australia Post losing money on letters, it would make sense for them to switch to this permanently, would it not? It's just a question of when. Well, look, th this is not a question uh, before the government of um, what happens in the longer term. We took a specific decision in relation to the immediate challenge of COVID-19. That's why it's a, a time-limited regulatory change. Uh, that's what we, uh, that's the regulation that I've made as Minister. That's what uh, Labor was seeking to have overturned for uh, short-term political reasons as part of a baseless scare campaign. Um, uh, and the regulation is time-limited. We've confined ourselves right. um, to, to that measure. So if Australia Post comes to you in, ahead of June next year and says, look, this is working really well, we don't believe there's much of a cut in service, what about making this permanent, what would your response be? Well, look, I'm not going to get into speculation now about uh, a hypothetical question. Our focus uh, is on the uh, health aspects of this crisis, the economic aspects of this crisis. This has been a decision uh, specific to the current time period, as I say, time limited through to 30 June 2021. Uh, that's the basis okay. on which we've made the decision. Um, in and we've moved quickly, as we've moved quickly in relation to so many other challenges our economy is facing. You know, our focus as a government is on uh, responding to this crisis, uh, getting the economy through this as best we can, saving lives, saving livelihoods. This is one of many, many decisions our government has taken so that Australia is best placed to deal with and respond to uh, this pandemic. The union is saying that they got a briefing out of every four posty workers at the moment. The way they would be redeployed, three of them would have some sort of role under this new regime. So what happens to the other one quarter of those posties? Look, let's be clear, that's one of the many baseless claims that's been made. Um, the, the chief executive of Australia Post has made it very clear there will be no forced redundancies. All this exercise is about mm. allowing people to be redeployed. So uh, the Chief so those, Executive those of Australia Post... Those are somewhere else in the business, basically, in some form in the parcel area or...? 
Uh, that's right. It's about redeployment of posties uh, from mail, from delivering letters to delivering parcels. Um, and it's about uh, maintaining people in the workforce. And so this baseless scare campaign from, from Labor and the unions uh, is driven by particular motivations. In Labor's case, beating up a scare campaign uh, in relation to the Eden Monero by-election. In the union's case, it's all about positioning ahead of uh, enterprise uh, bargaining negotiations. Wanted to ask you as well about a potential package for the arts. This is a sector that's been smashed by COVID-19 without specific help. I understand there are other areas of help going in there, but a lot of these people haven't qualified for JobKeeper. Something in the mix, according to an article today. Are you able to confirm something's imminent here in terms of something to be announced? Look, you're certainly right to say that the, the arts sector, the entertainment sector, has been hit very hard by COVID-19. Venues closed, uh, performances cancelled, artists losing their gigs. Uh, the Prime Minister yesterday convened a round table with uh, uh, some leading uh, arts figures, uh, entertainers, uh, Guy Sebastian, Mark Vincent, uh, as well as a lot of business people from the arts sector. And uh, the Prime Minister, the Treasurer and I had the opportunity to hear from people in the sector. And of course, you know, Guy Sebastian made the point when he goes on tour, it's with his band, his roadies, his, his crew. Uh, you know, it's a, he, he, he needs to take a business risk on that and there's a lot of employment associated with what he does, as well as, of course, entertaining Australians and he's a very, very popular performer. Um, so uh, our focus in hearing from people in the sector yesterday was very much about employment impacts. What has the impact been of the COVID-19 downturn on the arts sector, on the entertainment sector? And uh, look, as the Prime Minister has said in recent weeks, uh, we've been focused on, in terms of the economic crisis, uh, we started with the broad strokes, job, seek, job seeker, job keeper, uh, in terms of their broad economy-wide impact, uh, but we're also looking at uh, specific areas that are in need of support. And of course, we've seen right. things like a housing package recently. So we're, uh, we're continuing to do work in these areas. All right. Inching closer, it sounds like. We'll watch this space. Just finally as well, Minister, we're talking about the current crop of people who work in the arts. It's a pretty broad definition, obviously, in Australia. On the same day, an announcement that a humanities course will more than double in price. Do you think it's fair to say the government wants fewer people to study humanities? I mean, if it's about incentive and disincentive, that's got to be the natural consequence, doesn't it? Well, look, Education Minister Dan Tian has announced uh, uh, some significant changes that the government is proposing to um, the way that support is provided to higher education and particularly for individual courses. Quite a number of courses will become uh, cheaper for students and that's designed to uh, encourage students in those areas uh, where there is um, significant uh, need, continuing need. Um, and so Minister Tian has, has been explaining the rationale for Not this the, package. Right, I mean, it's going to get a lot more expensive. You'd assume fewer people will enrol in humanities across the board. Uh, look, I'll leave it to Minister Tian to explain uh, the detailed implications of the package, but in the broad, it's about making the university system better responsive to the needs of Australian students so that we can keep uh, uh, educating right. the next generation and meeting the needs of the workforce. You know, a high percentage of people in the future workforce uh, will need to be degree qualified, and this is about having a higher education system which is as responsive as possible to the needs of Australian students uh, and so they can get the qualifications they need uh, to have a satisfying career.